This video is sponsored by JLCPCB. More on them later. Hey everyone, it's been a while. I've been deep in firmware development, but I'm incredibly thankful for all the support y'all have shown on these last few videos. Today, we'll be covering the firmware development for each version of Flight Computer One. But first, here's a word from our sponsor. If you haven't already heard, JLC PCB is an industry-leading PCB prototype manufacturer. They also offer advanced assembly services, including reliable small batch production. I've trusted them to produce PCBs for all versions of Flight Computer One and will again be using them for version three. If you're looking to prototype your own PCBs, consider JLC PCB. You can get your next project manufactured and assembled for as low as $2. Just look at these boards and those shiny gold pads. Aren't they pretty? I built the first version of Flight Computer 1's firmware to dive deeper into basic C and C++ programming with a focus on real-time embedded applications. My goal was ambitious. I wanted to develop a guidance, navigation, and control system that could send telemetry data back to the ground, all while I was just starting to learn these concepts. But here's how I went about it. The firmware was written in C++ using the Arduino framework and VS Code with the platform I.O. extension. I use libraries to handle sensor communication, orientation, and control system calculations. The main code runs a basic state machine to determine flight states and control the vehicle's orientation. It all starts with the initialization of the flight computer's LED, buzzer, power monitor, and pyro channel. Once everything is up and running, you can choose how to start the system, which then enters a loop in the ground idle flight state. I also built a basic ground station in processing. It visualizes the rocket's orientation using serial data from the flight computer and updates a 3D model. It's not fancy, but it works as a simple way to display telemetry. It's based on Adafruit's IMU visualizer code and is responsible for tokenizing a CSV string and updating the 3D model with such data in real time. Honestly, I didn't expect much from this first attempt. There were a ton of bugs during simulated flight tests, but I learned a lot. I figured out how to read data from ITC sensors and use it to find the rocket's orientation, critical stuff for flight navigation. I also wrote a simple guidance algorithm to detect various flight states. However, the shoot test failed and there were too many bugs for me to fix at this time. The ground station worked better, but I had some texture issues with the 3D model. Despite these challenges, this version taught me the fundamentals I needed to move forward. For version two of the firmware, I aimed to build upon what I'd learned from the first design and finally meet my core goals, particularly adding data logging and improving real-time telemetry for my first level one certification flight attempt. The switch from the Teensy to an STM32 microcontroller was a major step forward, allowing for more complex functionality in the future. I also wanted to dive into some advanced firmware concepts, including introducing a real-time operating system for better task management and efficiency. Initially, the code layout followed a very similar structure to that in version one. However, this time I added a coprocessor to handle data logging over I2C, while the main microcontroller focused on real-time tasks like telemetry and flight state detection. The coprocessor was connected to the main through I2C and would log data to an SD card via SPI, theoretically freeing up the main micro. However, this plan faced significant issues. One of the primary challenges was the MS5611 pressure sensor. Unfortunately, it requires a significant delay after each reading request, which slowed down my entire system. I attempted a non-blocking read using the Arduino's MILI function to handle the delay, but this didn't quite solve the problem. No data could be read from the sensor, or if any data was read, it was really inconsistent. Also, the coprocessor wasn't as effective as I'd hoped. It wasn't really speeding up the system very much, especially because of the MS5611. At this point, I realized that handling multiple tasks, real-time data acquisition, logging, and telemetry required a more sophisticated approach. This is where the idea of using RTOS came in. I decided to implement free RTOS ported to STM32 Duino. With RTOS, I was able to split the firmware into multiple tasks with dedicated tasks for sensor data acquisition, the flight loop, and SD logging. By using queues and semaphores, I ensured that the data from the sensors was correctly passed between tasks without interfering with critical operations. This setup allowed me to prioritize tasks. For example, reading the IMU data could take priority over the MS5611, thus reducing the impact of its delay. Initially, the RTOS implementation was a bit tricky. Properly managing task priorities and resource sharing was more complex than I expected, and I ran into a whole host of bugs during development. Thanks to Sean Hamill's RTOS series on DigiKey, I was able to work through many of these bugs, and things really started to come together. Overall, RTOS allowed for more efficient use of the system's resources. By running tasks in parallel and prioritizing them effectively, I was able to significantly reduce the delay caused by the MS5611 sensor. The firmware performed well enough during my second level one flight attempt, successfully logging data, determining flight states, and sending real-time telemetry back to the ground. Though there were still areas for improvement, like fine-tuning the task priorities, this version marked a big step forward in the complexity and capability of my flight computer's firmware. Ultimately, 
I learned that while adding features like coprocessors and real-time operating systems can theoretically solve specific problems, they often introduce new layers of complexity. It's essential to strike a balance between functionality and simplicity in embedded systems design. But RTOS was a valuable tool for managing the increasing complexity of Flight Computer One's firmware. Version 2.5 took things a step further. I wanted to implement a control system for my thrust vector controlled rocket and to improve sensor filtering. This started as a direct port of version 2, but I added a PID control system and integrated additional sensors. Unfortunately, I ran into a bunch of bugs with the control system's responsiveness. After some trial and error, I made the tough decision to ditch the RTOS implementation and move back to the simple Superloop. It was a very difficult decision, but I think it was ultimately the right one. This version also introduced a command line interface and configuration file stored on the SD card for easy access to the system's parameters. I even added a data transfer function to move data from the onboard flash to an external SD card, making it even easier to extract and read all the data. This firmware performed decently, and I was happy with the improvements. The TVC rocket flew successfully, and bug fixing was relatively straightforward. The ground station also received an upgrade, with more data points and real-time plotting. It's also structured across multiple files for easier maintenance. There's still some functionality and bugs to work out, but it's shaping up to be a valuable tool for managing the flight computer status and debugging. Version 3 is all about scalability and portability. I wanted to make the firmware more modular and easier to adapt to different hardware platforms, and to take better advantage of C++ features like encapsulation and polymorphism. This version is still in late development, but I've taken a lot of inspiration from open source software like Betaflight and iNav. The goal is to create a structure that is flexible and scalable, allowing me to port it to future projects more easily. I'm also focusing on critical fail-safes like watchdog timers and data range checks, while improving telemetry and data logging systems using techniques I've learned from Lafayette Systems. I'd love to share more, but we might be poking the ITAR bear if I go into too much detail. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I really hope this video was worth the wait. In the next one, we'll dive deeper into version 3 of Flight Computer 1. I'm also working on designing and scratch building a special testbed vehicle for my level 2 certification attempt, where I'll also fly that new computer. If you'd like real-time updates, please consider liking, subscribing, or even supporting me on Patreon or as a YouTube member. Your support helps me pursue this full-time, and you're the key to making this stream a reality. Thanks again. See you next time.